Hey folks, it's Ray of DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got an in-depth review of the new Favero Asiamo Duo Shi, which is essentially their Shimano compatible road pedal, SPD-SL compatible road pedal power meter. Except there's a couple catches. Number one being that you don't actually get the pedal. You're buying just the spindle. Now, while past Favero Asiomo power meters, like right here, have included the entire pedal, this one is just the spindle part. What do you see right there? This little piece right there, along with the charger and stuff like that, but it does not include the pedal portion, which is Shimano Ultegra pedals or any of the pedals that you see on the screen right now that are compatible with this system. For that, you'll need to also purchase the pedal and then merge the two together. Now, the good news is the merging process takes like two minutes. It's really straightforward. It's pretty easy. Uh, so it's more just your time buying the parts separately and then spending the two minutes to take the existing spindle out of the old pedal body and then put the new Favero spindle in there. Uh, now what's interesting about this and perhaps good or bad depending on your viewpoint is that these spindles are the exact same as these old spindles with one tiny little catch which means you can't take your existing spindles and put them into Shimano pedals and we'll get into all that in just a second. Now before I forget the pricing on this, now the way Favero works they always do euro pricing and then other countries just convert based on exchange rates. Uh, so that said Favero says that the US dollar pricing should be 589 US dollars roughly um, but it starts off as euro pricing at 495 euros excluding VAT which brings it to in most cases VAT inclusive pricing of 589 euros for the duo version. So again this is the two-sided version. That is a little bit cheaper cheaper than they had the duos for the Lokios, but of course you still have to buy the pedals. Now when it comes to the Shimano compatible pedals, uh, they range from roughly about 60 to 200 US dollars. In euros you'll find them from about 40 to 120 euros, so you need to add that cost to it as well. Now this is a good time to point out if you're finding this video interesting or useful or anything at all really, just go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get the stuff temporary rarely out of the way over here. There we go. And this is the box that it comes in. Uh, so a pretty big box for two little spindles and some charging cables. Uh, now, in my case, to make my life easier and more importantly, better show you what it looks like with clean pedals, uh, they did throw in a pair of the Ultegra pedals and the cleats. Normally, not normally, they do not come in the box in any way, shape or form, normally or other normally or anything at all. They're just not there. So again, you have to buy the Shimano pedals, which comes with cleats and comes with the mounting hardware that you see in the picture. Uh, otherwise, you just get the spindle piece. So what about weights? Okay, so starting off with the spindle and the pedal body together. So you can see this is the Asiyama Shi. Come on, just stay put. Uh, 158 grams for those two. There's no other parts here except a single spacer if you wanted to put one on. Uh, so 158 grams for that. For the Garmin Rally with a tiny bit of dirt still on it maybe or dust or whatever. Um, Rally Shimano variant, 160 grams. So again, essentially about the same there. Uh, compared to the existing Favero Asioma, this is the Lokio variant, 150 grams. Uh, and now I'm, I'm out of pedals that matter in this particular case. Now, this is the spindle here, as you see right there. Uh, and so there's two spindles in it. Uh, I've already put the other spindle in there. So if I grab that other pedal, you can see it's already assembled. Uh, so this essentially goes like this into this pedal body like that. Uh, and then you're good to go. Also in the box is the charging cables, uh, which you can see right here. It's a dual sided charging cable, which I appreciate. Uh, battery life is 50 hours. And so if we move all this junk out of the way, you'll see this little clippy thing right here simply goes in like this to charge it and you plug this bit into the wall and you got dual USB ports as you can see on the back right there. Pretty straightforward again, 50 hours. It seems about right. And, and keep in mind, I've been using Febrero Asioma pedals now for about four years. So I've got a lot of a lot of history on these pedals. But in this particular case on these Asioma Shimano variants, I've actually been using these two for over a year. Uh, so in testing on and off over the last year. So quite a bit longer than most power meters that I test. Uh, so I've got plenty of data that we'll run through in just a moment. Okay, so when it comes to a Assembly, things are fairly straightforward. You've got two wrenches, a 17 mil and a 19 mil, or you can just use one adjustable wrench like I have here to do both of them. Uh, and so what you can do is take your existing pedals, uh, as you see here in the picture, your existing Shimano pedals, and go ahead and remove the spindle. That's simply just rotating around and around and around until it comes out, pretty straightforward. And then you take the spindle that came in the box from Favero and you insert it in, exact same thing, until it's tight again. Like this is, it's not complicated at all. And then you do the whole thing again for the other side. Now, once that's done, you need to go ahead and attach the charging cable uh, to the wall and then to these to wake them up. Uh, they'll be in a sleep state otherwise, and you'll notice that because the lights won't blink. You can see the 
the lights blinking every couple of seconds right there. That means they're awake. Uh, now, normally they just go to sleep and wake up automatically as soon as you rotate the spindle, but for shipping purposes, you have to apply the charging cable to wake them up. After that, you'll install them on your bike. Uh, and so installing on the bike is pretty easy. You're gonna use the wrench that was included in the box itself, the hex wrench. You insert it into the back of the pedal uh, and you just simply put it on your crank arm. Now, generally speaking, you're probably gonna use at least one um, spacer. Uh, so the spacer is because you do not want this plastic pod right here to touch the crank arm itself. The metal, of course, is fine, but there needs to be a tiny little gap there uh, between the crank arm and the plastic pod. Otherwise, you might break the plastic pod and then bad things happen. And these are very, very durable plastic pods, but uh, when two things are pressed up against each other and they flex a little bit, um, they could break. And so you don't want that. So use a spacer, uh, then come in the box so you don't have to worry about that. Now, with that all set, go ahead and do about three to four sprints on a trainer or outside, whatever you want to do once it's nice and tight. And the reason is that we'll go ahead and it's called bedding the pedals. Basically means that they're going to tighten things up on the crank arm so you get more accurate measurements. Uh, so sprints, uh, nothing like crazy. You just do some nice sharp sprints for five to 10 seconds or so, uh, and do it three to four times, and then you're pretty much good to go. From there, you're gonna crack open the Favero app, uh, and within that, you need to activate the pedals, which is different than uh, putting the power to them, you need to activate them so they transmit data. If you don't do that, you don't get any data out of them. Uh, so you'll search for the pedals and you register your email address, and then a couple seconds later, you're done. Uh, if it's been a while since this video, then you might see a firmware update in there. Favero typically does firmware updates like one to two times a year, give or take. Uh, so that could be an option there as well. But you can set the crank length in there. Uh, that's super important from an accuracy standpoint. Uh, so generally speaking, you'll find your crank length on the inside of your crank, right? where the uh, pedal went into it. It should be something like 172.5, 175, 170. Uh, if you have something beyond that, you probably are very well aware of your crank length, so you better find that and put it in the app, uh, and then you're good to go. You can do a zero offset in the app, or you can do it on a bike computer of your choice, whatever that may be. Uh, so in this case, I've been using uh, Garmin and Wahoo and Asunto, and I've been using lots of things over the last year, actually, uh, with the Ferrero Asiomos. Uh, and each particular bike computer has differing capabilities ability levels when it comes to the data it can get from the Favero. So for example, the Sunto watch that I just took off, put it in the charger, um, that will give me total power, but it won't give me, uh, it won't record anyways the left right split of this unit uh, if I have the dual setup. So that's kind of a bummer, uh, but you get your total power, which is fine for the vast majority of things. In the case of the Wahoo series, you'll get total power and left right power and cadence as well. You'll get cadence also on Sunto, uh, but you won't get cycling dynamics. Uh, and then if you go to the Garmin Edge series or 400 series, uh, Phoenix series, whatever, all the Garmin units, you'll also get cycling dynamics data too. In that case, that'll additionally show you your power phase and your seated standing time. Uh, Fibero does not do the platform center offset that Garmin does on the rally and vector pedals. Uh, now, whether or not using any of the cycling dynamics stuff, yeah, probably not after like a time or two, uh, but it's there. So in any case, as I said, I've been using these things for like a year now uh, and testing on and off, and I've used them on tons of road rides, as you can see right here. I've used them off on gravel rides, like uh, I've been using them everywhere. They really haven't been a problem. On trainer rides, a ton of my reviews over the past data have actually featured these uh, quietly behind the scenes. Uh, and the thing is, it's the same spindle as the existing Favero Asioma. Uh, literally, it's the exact same spindle inside. When I say spindle, I mean this part right here. This, this is the spindle, uh, and then the little cartridge bit is slightly different, but uh, the same spindle to go inside, whether it's a Lokio version they already have, or the new Shimano version. So you may be asking yourself, well then why can't I just use the existing Favero Asioma I have and convert it into a Shimano variant? And the reason is that Favero says there is a small oil retainer cap that they've glued onto it. Uh, and that oil retainer cap uh, then has a different calibration value that they calibrate the factory. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I get it, kinda, not really. Like uh, to me, that seems a little bit, a little bit, um, yeah. That's that's their explanation. That's that's all I've got to say about that. Um, but you have to buy new pedals. But hey, like they're half the price of Garmin Rally pedals, so I guess there's that for you. Okay, so we got to talk about one more thing, which is Q factor. You're gonna see a lot of talk about Q factor on these pedals before we talk about accuracy. And Q factor, if I grab my handy dandy random crank sitting behind me, let's try not to puncture my Garmin, uh, is referred to as two different things, oddly enough. Uh, and so we're gonna talk about both of them and why they're sort of interesting. Uh, so. In this case, let's just say I've got a pedal right here, and 
put it into this hole. Uh, so it goes in all the way in, right? So it looks roughly like this. Uh, Q factor is referred to in some cases as the point from right there to the midpoint of the pedal. Uh, and for this first variant, this one has increased in Favero's case. And so if I look at, let me grab the other side here, that is a Shimano, and you can see here the existing uh, Lokio variant. Uh, let me just slide this up, there we go. And you can see if I put them in the same spot, this Shimano variant is pumped out about 11 millimeters. So it's got a Q factor of 65 compared to 54 on the Lokio variant. Again, if this was over here, uh, and you can see how this is shorter than the other ones. Uh, now, 53 to 54 is a norm for most road pedals, uh, and that's the case for the uh, Garmin Vector 3 and Rally at 53, the Asiomo is at 54, the PowerTap uh, P1 and P2s, I think they're all 53 and 54, uh, and then also the SRM Exact SP. PD pedals are also 53 to 54. So in the Shimano stock pedals, so the ones that you had before you tore it apart, are also 53. And at first glance, you're saying that's quite a bit different. And yes, it is different, but not as much as you might think and not as applicable as you might think. Because as I mentioned, Q-Factor has two kind of variants to it. The first is this pedal-based one, but the next one is the distance between uh, your crank arms, your stance width effectively. Uh, and that's quite different on different bikes. Uh, and so if you had different bikes, then you already have different Q factors. Uh, and let me just kind of show you this as an example on my bikes and all the bikes I test around here. So my road bike is 140 millimeters. My triathlon bike is 150 millimeters. My mountain bike is 170 millimeters. Uh, my cargo bike is 170 millimeters. Uh, my commuter bike is also about 168 or so millimeters. Uh, so quite a bit different spread. And I use all those bikes on a mostly daily basis. I rode here on the cargo bike and I've got my road bike right there and my mountain bike's not like I use them all. Right? You mix and match like most people tend to do. But wait, let's talk about smart bikes. The same smart bikes that you spend 3,500 bucks to throw in your living room and place your road bike, those two are different. Uh, so Stages bike is 157 millimeters. The Peloton bike, 170 millimeters. The Tax Neo Smart Bike, 147 millimeters. The True Bike from True Kinetics, 155 millimeters. The Watt Bike Pro, 173 millimeters. The biggest of all of them, yet the one that like so many professional athletes like. Uh, the Watt Bike Atom, 160 millimeters. And the Watt Kicker Bike, 150 millimeters. So even that bike is 10 meter millimeters more than my road bike that it supposedly mimics. So does Q factor matter? And the answer is maybe for some people. For 95% of the people, probably not at all. But if you only ride Shimano Tegra pedals and only on your road bike, and that's the only thing you ever do, then you might notice a difference for like a day or two. For me, no. Not not at all. But you do you. I don't I don't really care. It's just my like two cents on that topic. I have other things I'd rather complain about instead. I think uh, one being the the pods are still here. Like it's been how many years now? Seven years, six years since the original B-Pro pedals, and four years since the uh, Asiomas came out. And why am I still holding this thing? I'm like gonna hit someone with it or something. So um, I think at this point, like it's 2021, it's time for the pods to go away. Uh, but maybe that'll be a future version or something like that. Uh, pricing though is good. And effectively, that's a thing to keep in mind. You are saving on pricing here uh, compared to Garmin Rally or Vector 3. Uh, you don't have the versatility, like in the case of Rally you can, or Vector 3, you can switch between SPD, SPDSL, and uh, Lokio, and you can't do that here. For some people that matters, for others, not so much. But one thing that does matter is accuracy. So let's talk about accuracy. I have way too much stuff here. Um, so move this all out of the way, bring my computer over, and let's look at some sets. Uh, we're gonna start off with some indoor sets and then go to some outdoor sets. Uh, I've got way more data on my Inmyth review, linked below there. Uh, and so if you wanna look at all that data and also tons more details and all this stuff, you can do that there as well. So let's pull up a interval set. Uh, I've got the Quark D0 power meter. I've got the Favero Asioma Duo Shi, uh, and I've got a Jet Black Volt that I just finished reviewing on the site as well. And you can see here, these are intervals with uh, 30 second spikes, and then they come down to like four minutes, I think or so, three minutes, something like that. Uh, and they repeat the whole thing over and over again. Uh, a really good test of how things feel. I'm just gonna zoom in on a couple of these so you can see what's going on though. Uh, so here we go. Uh, now in this case, the Volt is, has like an erg mode smoothing on it. So you see that from the Jet Black trainer there kind of being really static, but then if you look at the uh, Asioma and the Quark, they trend together very closely. And you see this little spike at the beginning of each one? That's my legs reacting to that particular interval. Uh, and so that's me not really paying attention. And all of a sudden, boom, the interval happens. And it's like, ah, I gotta, gotta work. Um, but 
everything is very, very similar. Uh, now, this has no smoothing on this particular graph, but these are, are really, really similar across the board. And this is actually on the first ride of me installing these pedals. And generally, you're going to see things stabilize a bit more uh, with each successive ride. Uh, and so I'm moving these constantly around. So this is pretty good, don't get me wrong, but uh, as you see in the next set, it's a little bit smoother uh, as you go further along into that usage. So like a ride later or two rides later. And again, if you look at these here, all this stuff is pretty solid. Uh, I've got one sprint, I believe, towards the end. I'll pull this up and you can see all these are basically identical. There's a slight timing difference there, so I wouldn't overthink that too much. Uh, that's just recording uh, and transmission timing there. But again, very, very much the same. Uh, if I go down to the mean max graph for this here, uh, you'll see they're all very similar. Uh, in the case of the Quark D0 and the Favaro Asiomo, uh, they're in the correct ordering, meaning that the Favaro pedal should be the highest and the Quark D0 and then the Jetback Trainer. Uh, this is pretty clean in how I like to see the data. Now, let's look at another set here. This is from actually just last night. Uh, in this case, it's an outdoor ride. I've got a PowerTap G3 hub on the back of the bike, uh, the rear wheel. And then I've got the Quark D0 power meters, and I've got the Shimano uh, Asioma variant. And you can see here's the data there. It looks kind of busy. I was also recording this for fun, though, on the Sunto 9 Peak and the Wahoo Bolt, as well as the Edge 1030 Plus. So I wanted to see, was there any recording differences between those? And the first thing to say is, yeah, there was. Uh, not between the Wahoo so much and the Garmin. Those are pretty much the same, except for typical transmission differences, uh, timing-wise. Uh, but between the Sunto 9 Peak and the others. And the reason is the Sunto 9 Peak, uh, in a default configuration, will go ahead and just attach to a single pedal. It can't really attach to both pedals. Uh, now, Favero accounts for that in their app. They have a toggle you can set on and off to single channel everything, which means take both pedals and just bring it into one channel uh, for apps and devices that don't understand how to deal with dual channel power meters like the Sunto uh, series doesn't. So in that case, if I toggle that, I would probably see the exact same power, but I didn't because that's not really how I like to do my data. I like it's multi-channel data, so I want to keep it multi-channel data. Um, so in this case, though, if I zoom in here on a couple random chunks, we're going to go with this little sprint section right there, uh, about 800 or so watt sprint. These are smooth to five seconds, I believe. Uh, and you can see things are virtually the same across the board. Slight timing differences. So you see one of them is one second ahead, just the recording rate. I could realign that, but it doesn't really matter here. It's all the, the same data-wise across the board. And more importantly, between the Quark and the PowerTap G3 Hub uh, and the Asiomo uh, Shimano variant, it's virtually identical. It's like almost identical across every single thing. Uh, in some cases, the hub should actually be a tiny bit lower uh, due to drivetrain efficiency losses, but I probably just need to get that in for servicing. Just talking a couple watts here, not very much, but very, very close. If I look at cadence as well, uh, it's identical across the board. You see those yellow lines of the hub? That's because the hub has an estimated cadence as opposed to being uh, exact cadence. So that's why you see those slight little fluctuations there. That's been the case with PowerTap hubs for like I don't know, 15 or 20 years, however long they've been in the market. That's just the way they work. Um, but then look at the mean max power there. That's a beautiful mean max graph right there. Uh, that is super, super clean uh, across, you know, an hour and a half or so ride. Um, with sprints in there up to 900 watts. And like, it's it's pretty much spot on, which is the gist of things. Like I could go through the graphs all day long. I've got data for over a year, as I said. I've linked to a lot of that in the, in the in-depth. I've linked to a lot of that in the in-depth review if you want it there. But like, this is super clean data. There's nothing accuracy-wise. It's the same Favero Asioma spindles that you know and love for the last four years and the same accuracy you know and love for the last four years. So there you go, a complete in-depth review on the Favero Asioma pedals. Uh, people will be asking, like, should I get Rally or these? Or I guess that's really only two choices if you want SPDSL. Uh, and my simple answer is what your budget sort of affords and what your use case affords. Like, uh, Rally is great. I use Rally too on other bikes here. I, I mix and match them all. Uh, and Favero is great. You use them on bikes too. And uh, the thing that I appreciate about Rally is the ability to take that spindle and quickly swap it between uh, pedal body types, between SPD, SPDSL, and Lokio. Uh, so if you're doing that throughout a season, then great. But if you're never going to do that, then you're spending an extra four to 500 bucks for the sake of it. Uh, and accuracy on both of them are equal. And I think all the existing past vector rally problems uh, from like a battery pod standpoint are solved. Uh, so again, there's lots of pros and cons there. I could probably do an entire video on just pros and cons of those two pedals. But the simple gist of it is, is do you want to save a bunch of money? And if so, get Favero. And if you need pedal portability uh, between cleat types, then get the Garmin. It's like that's the, the simple version. So with that, hope you found this interesting and useful. If so, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty.